Thanks for uh, stopping by the uh, shop for another video. As you know, my name's Chuck. And uh, how fast a year goes by. As this boat is, a, this, excuse me, this video is about the trailer valet. Um, it's a device that you use to move trailers. And as you can see, my boat is there behind us, or behind me. Um, a year ago, I uh, posted a video uh, mistakes and modifications or modifications and mistakes and it was about the build of a adapter for the trailer valet for my usage and uh, I never did a follow-up video to it so here we are late August and the boats back from the lake here's a uh, photo Oh, I think you saw that photo, and uh, you can see the difference what a year has done in California. A year ago, the boat was on the dock sitting there in water, and a year later, there's no water in that lake. Uh, it's, there is still water in the lake, but lots of hazards and uh, boat ramp issues, and never even launched the boat this year. Had it in storage uh, up there. Uh, 150 a month and said, okay, I guess it's time to bring it home. Uh, who knows uh, when that lake will fill back up. There is the Delta and other lakes closer to home here uh, that we can use. Uh, Clear Lake, where the boat was at, that's uh, three hours away. So this video, uh, again, is uh, regarding the trailer valet and my modifications to it, uh, or making the adapter for it to, for my usage. And uh, I've included the portion of the video from a year ago uh, after my discussion about the trailer valet. It was about my issues of mistakes and then the modifications I had to make. Um, and so you may enjoy watching it again. Maybe you saw it a year ago. Again, uh, I thank you for stopping by the channel. I hope you enjoy. I hope everybody's safe and uh, not not in a fire situation, uh, at least in California. And uh, we'll be uh, catching up soon on some other videos here in the shop. Take care. Okay, here's the uh, trailer valet. It's uh, mounted on my trailer with the mount that I built. I did this rather than using the ball. If you continue to watch the movie, I explain building the mount, the problems I had with it, and why I'm not using the trailer ball. But uh, give you a quick little demonstration on the unit. The uh, basically this this engages your brake or your your engage for movement, and it's got two speeds. This is uh, show you the fast speed, how fast I can actually move the boat. Now this is a five thousand pound boat and trailer, and this is the uh, slow speed, which has much more torque, um, not a lot of load to move it. And re-engage the brake there. So the handle works really well. You can you can turn the unit and, and back the trailer and move the trailer wherever you need it. It works really well. Also has a uh, socket adapter for a drill. And to show you that how it works. works really well and when there's a load on it as you can see it's a little tougher to control the variable speed on the drill but it, the drill is super handy when you're moving the boat and trailer quite a distance on some flat space you can really motor especially if you go on the high speed right here is a little bit of a load uh, that it really won't pull it on this small of a drill. So I hope you enjoyed a little demonstration of the trailer valet. I'm really happy with the product. I'm happy with my modification that I did that works for me. If you watch the rest of the video, uh, if you'll see the issues I had with my first build and the mistakes I made along with uh, the completion of this build. It's worked out good 
and uh, I wanted to share it with you. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video and uh, we'll catch you again soon here in the future. Well, mistakes and or modifications and mistakes. Pardon my dirty workbench here. This uh, this is the, called a trailer valet, and it's uh, a device for moving trailers. And you can put a hand crank on it. Whoop! Well, you can put the handle on there. Put a hand crank on it, and with the and so right there. You notice it won't move, and if you release the brake, then it'll move, right? You can crank and move. And it's got a high high speed and a low speed. And they also made a tool to go on a drill driver and drive it with a drill driver. So, modifications and mistakes. This, uh, let's uh, flip to a picture. That's the uh, front of my boat trailer, and you can see it has a surge brake on it. Well, with the problem with the surge brake is that as this moves, the surge brake moves, and now you're not uh, having good weight on the cup on the ball. Uh, the, I've watched a lot of videos of uh, fellows that have, have these and use them, and there's a lot of videos where they don't have a surge brake. They go to use the machine, and it actually bends the cup. Uh, it ruins the cup on their trailer. I didn't want to have to deal with that at all. Um, so I decided more research and I found this. So here's a, we're gonna to flip to a photograph. And you can see there they have a, uh, an adapter where you can bolt to the frame. So I decided to go ahead. That adapter is 130 bucks. I said, well, heck, I can make it. It'd be a nice project. So um, this uh, pretty nice unit. The, the trailer ball screws into the unit, and you have to use their trailer ball. It's a fine thread trailer ball. Um, and this piece threads up and down for your height adjustment and locking the ball. And it's it's a nice nice piece there. Uh, they have a spanner wrench that you can use to tighten it. Anyway, so I said uh, I'm going to make what they have. And there's the, the unit that sits in the um, trailer valet. So I said I'm going to make a unit here. So I'm going to show you some different uh, pictures uh, possibly here. But So I made, I made this guy here. And I made it out of gas pipe. And I was kind of, kind of proud of it. I needed, I needed to make that bottom piece right there. And this was the wrong diameter. So I, I built it up with weld and then machined it. And you'll see some pictures here. And uh, I was pretty happy with it. Then I uh, made a plate that would go on the trailer, and I made two plates. I made this one, which was a fixed plate, and then I made one that's an adjustable. Well, the fixed plate, I had bolted it, and the weight of the trailer actually unspun it. So I ended up putting the adjustable plate on the boat trailer. 
and that worked. But there's here comes my mistake. I ended up I I, I wanted <laughs> this was this is this is really dope stupid. There's the pin that goes through this bottom piece right here. Right? Right? That locks in there. And I said, oh, that's nice. I says, hey, I've got one that'll fit right here. That'll be great. I have one in the drawer. So I pull it out. I'm all happy. It fits. It's a nice size and everything. Well, had it all hooked up, started moving the boat with this machine, and a little bit of a grade, not much, and I stopped, used the brake and stopped it, and it sheared the pin. Hmm, hi Charlie. Hey, remember that guy Charlie? Guy always makes mistakes around here. Well, Charlie didn't pay attention. That's aluminum. Sheared that puppy right off. Luckily, the actual trailer jack wheel was only that far off the ground. Nobody got hurt, no damage, no nothing. Very, very fortunate. So, from that point, I said, okay, well, I'm not going to deal with that. So I went and bought, went to the hardware store, bought a grade 8 bolt, and drilled this guy out to take the grade 8, eight bolt and secure the other one from spinning. Well, not a mistake. Well, I guess a mistake. You'll see some pictures of this too. But the boat and trailer weighs 5,000 pounds. And just trying, it, the, the angle of attack that this was doing, uh, the way it was working, you can see it just wallowed out this gas pipe that I used. Wall thickness was not substantial by any means. So you can see the difference in wall thicknesses there. So, no good. You've got to remake it. Or I can spend 130 bucks. But I don't think, I don't like the way that thing bolts on the way they have it. So, I uh, had a piece of uh, two and a quarter inch stock and I machined a new one. So there's the bottoms, and this guy will sit in there like here. And I have to weld it, and then the, the plate will go into there. So I call this uh, lip, liptonization. <laughs> Old Tom Lipton, anything built too strong will never break. Well, I think uh, now i got enough wall thickness here compared to that guy uh, that I shouldn't have a problem with this. I still need to uh, weld it and uh, finish it and hopefully you're going to try it this week so this is kind of a part one we won't have a, a finish i'll have to film uh, using the unit up there and see how it works uh 
The only other thing I thought I'd share with you is how I how I cut the uh, bird's mouth on the uh, pipe here. Um, hang on, I'll be right back. Some time ago, I did a video on these uh, cutters that I got from Banggood to uh, basically as a sponsorship item and to demonstrate. And this is what I ended up using. And so basically, let me take the spring out of there. Really worked nice. Drilled, it drills a pilot hole and it holds the cutter right in place. So basically it was just like that. Whoop, come on. Got the drill bit stuck. Basically just came down just like that in the end of the pipe and cut all the way to the end. Flipped it 180 degrees, did the same thing, and then just came in with the bandsaw to, uh, to cut this part off. Which ends up with the part like that. Need to bevel all this prior to welding it, but it uh, really worked out good. I did it on uh, both, did it on this small piece first, and then redid it on the thicker part, and it worked fantastic. So uh, let's see if I can get it welded up, and maybe I'll show you if my welds look better than this than this guy. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's uh, let's cut, and we'll we'll bring you back here shortly. So I'm going to use the uh, belt grinder to get a uh, weld prep on here. Let's give it a shot. Small wheel adapter works real well. Get in there and get that. Okay. Well, I need to I need to finish by drilling holes for this guy to have the pin go through, a steel pin, actually the bolt. Um but I really want everything square in 90 degrees. So you can see the Wixie in the back there. Um, had it here, had it on the bench, zeroed it, zero, and uh, I'm in pretty good shape right there. But the welding uh, magnet here doesn't allow me to get in here and start scribing. And I really, this, this guy I drilled it after I welded it. And because I had the flexibility I thought I had. <laughs> uh, I don't want to do that again. Uh, I really want to pre-drill this and I can measure, pick up this hole and, and make it make it bigger. Uh, and have it nice and 90 degrees. And then this plate has already been on the uh, trailer. And then I took it off and put the adjustable plate on. So this hole pattern is already on the trailer. So... Uh, been sitting here debating what to do, and I think what I'm going to do is give it a couple of tacks so I can take the magnet out, and then I can uh, scribe some lines and get uh, get it that way, get it perfect, cut it, and uh, cut it back off, and then go and drill, and then go ahead and weld it up. 
that's the plan, I think. So we'll see. And I got a plan B. This, uh, this hasn't been welded onto this plate yet. So I can uh, unbolt it and I can locate, I can rotate and get this guy square after the holes are drilled. But I can use this, I can make sure that the hole is square to the edge of the plate, tighten it with the bolt, which I think I've done, I have to double check it. I know the distance, I can check the distance here, and then I can uh, space this guy and line it up and drill through both of them at the same time. So it doesn't have to be in this fixture. It doesn't have to be, it can be just in the mill. And then I can always adjust this plate to get the final clocking if I need it. I think that's the plan. I got to study it some more. I only want to do it one time. So here's my setup. I using some fireball uh, magnet blocks to space my sleeve off the stub a quarter inch. That way I'm not sitting down on the weld. Um, and I've got a two inch fireball magnetic block underneath it. And then I basically raised the sleeve here up till I had zero zero on the angle cube which matches the vise and then clamped it down. So I think I'm set up. I've got a uh, center line and I've got a, a distance line to go ahead and drill the hole. So we'll see if uh, see if this uh, mad setup works. Should be good. Main thing is I didn't want this guy to be spinning as, it, as I was drilling. Drill bit.
looks like I hit my hole. Going through nice and easy, cleaning it up. Well, I have enough depth. Okay, longer drill bit to finish out the hole. Success. Well, that worked out good. So the plate, which will bolt on for tightening, I can clock it, get it parallel and perpendicular, and then go ahead and weld it. Weld it here. I've got a weld prep there. So ready to go ahead and uh, weld this back together. Weld the two together, and uh, oh, the other hole I got to drill is this guy down here. I forgot about that one. I got to drill a cross hole down here. That's relatively simple to do, though. Simple to mark, and it really doesn't matter where it is. Uh, this could be anywhere. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. Well, let's see how my welding skills are doing today. <laughs> I lost the uh, volume on this uh, track, so I'm pointing out the red mark that I had uh, found center. You, you know, just scribed it when it was in the uh, device. And you can see in the mill there, I have my um, laser centering device. And you can see it shooting there down on the part. And uh, I got a nice uh, circle around the part and uh, ready to drill it. So simple way of finding it and uh, having some fun with the tool that I own. Well, I just got done welding the plate on. It's hot. Charlie don't wait for anything. <laughs> but uh, the weld here turned out pretty good. Uh, not bad for for a uh, blind, shaky, deaf welder, as old Bruce Witten says. Um, probably could have used a little more fill rod. It's a little undercut, but um, I didn't want it looking like bird shit. This inner one was, uh, was tough to weld. It's so small. Um, of course, the piece wasn't in here when I welded it. But uh, got it all done and uh, good to go. So... Uh, all I'm going to do is uh, finish cleaning it. I throw maybe I think I might put some black crinkle paint on it, and uh, so it matches. And hopefully uh, later this week or into next week, I should say. This is a Saturday or Friday. Well, it's Saturday. Um, I'll get up to the lake and see if uh, if it works. 
I'll try to get some video when I do that. Thanks for uh, stopping by the channel. Appreciate it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, video. It was uh, fun. It was a fun little build, challenging, and uh, learned some lessons. Uh, and uh, Charlie, uh, we're going to keep him out of the shop as much as we can. I think he's a cousin of Bozo. All right. Thanks again. Take care. Be safe out there in today's world, huh? <laughs>